know you're sitting next to a complete stranger. It doesn't matter. And if you're sitting by yourself, you've really got to move next to someone else soon. And, and now, let's, because you don't want to be a, like a little thing on a rock by yourself. So, the other, and as Terry said, we need other people. Humans don't do well on their own. We need other people. And, and now I want to share with you, because that's the core of everything, but I want to share with you how that influences a leader's job. And a leader's job is threefold. The first part of a leader's job, 21st century leadership, is to change people's behavior. And we can do that in a heartbeat by telling people a story that touches their heart. So change people's behavior. We can do that in a heartbeat, but you've got to tell them a story that touches. And you know, people say, ah, oh, you can't change people. You know, like people don't change. Oh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Oh, yes, you can. Neuroscience teaches us that we can change any time we like, but we have to want to change. And so what you need to do is to get people to want to change, and that's by telling them a story that touches their heart. And we go into it a bit more depth in a minute. The second part of a leader's job is to create an environment in which people can be the best they can be. A create an environment which people can be the best they can be. That's joy-filled and fear-free. You're never going to win with a workplace that's full of fear. It's like, oh, yeah, I rule with a whip. Everybody loves it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a leader, I come into the office and I strike fear into the hearts of everyone. And you know, nobody's going to be thinking like that, nobody consciously does it. Some of you just do it. <laughs> and you have no clue. <laughs> so it's time to take a little stock and have a look at your leadership style and ask other people that you actually know would tell you the truth, not the ones who are going to suck up to you. <laughs> anyway, so the third part of a leader's job is to help people believe in themselves. Because belief in your own ability is a better predictor of success than any level of skill. So what do you do to help other people believe in themselves? Do you believe in them? But we'll be coming back to that too. So let me show you how the sciences intersect. We're going to, if we get time, we're going to talk about neuroscience, epigenetics, emotional intelligence, and positive psychology. And in the middle is a sweet spot. This is the spot of great leadership where they all intersect. And I call this the joy spot. Not that one. Stop it. Stop thinking that. Stop it immediately. This is a different joy spot, okay? And I thought Americans were conservative. Oh, I don't think so. Anyway, so your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to go forth and be a walking joy spot. And I suspect that's what Guy is like. You know, he said he spreads joy wherever he goes. Cool. So on the count of three, one side then the other, you are going to say, I am a walking joy spot. I am a walking, ready? One, two, three, go. I am a walking joy spot. I am a walking joy spot. Excellent, very good, very good. And, and your mission, seriously, is to go forth and spread joy. And for the cynics, for the cynics who are sitting out there going, yeah, well, it's all very well for her to be talking about this. Look at her, she's a fluffy kind of a thing, you know, like, oh, I'm a girl. Are you kidding? There's all this research now, and Harvard, amongst other institutions, have now said that happy people work better. Yep. Oh, surprise! <laughs> you know, it's like, duh. And, but now we have the proof. They're more productive, they're more, they perform better, they're more creative, they're more innovative. And so even though we're having some fun with this, and I say your mission is to be a walking joy spot, it's true. <laughs> Go forth and start to think about yours. Oh, I know, I know. You, oh, this is brilliant, thanks. This is a new definition of what you do in your life. When people ask you what you do, and you say, I am a leader, I don't want you to ever say it again. From now on, you're going to look at people and say, I am a joy facilitator. <laughs> How cool is that? It's brilliant. Become a joy. I haven't got time to spell it. That says facilitator, OK? And um, become a joy facilitator. Imagine, you go to a party, someone says, oh, what do you do? I'm a joy facilitator. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> You're going to be very popular. Very, very popular. <laughs> and imagine it, how J.D. Powell would look at an organization where everybody was so joyful. Maybe they could create a new category, the most joyful company. <gasps> they should pay me for that. Anyway, so we're going to talk about, for starters, neuroscience. I'm serious about being a joy facilitator because how you perceive yourself is critical. 
The story you tell yourself is critical. We'll come back to that. So, in neuroscience, I want to give you the scientific formula for change because we know people can change. But what's the first emotion that comes up when you say to someone, oh, we're going to change things? What is it? It's an F word. It's, it's fear. And your job as a leader is to eradicate the fear. Now, everybody's going to be scared about change because nobody likes change. But you can reframe it in a way that it equates to growth and development. It doesn't have to go change terror. Because the first thing that happens when, even when I say to you, uh, turn to the person next to you, look at them, and I don't even tell you to do anything. It's just turn to them and look at them. Your little amygdala, the part of your brain that registers fear, goes eh! <laughs> It's fully formed at birth. Our amygdala, fully formed and functional at birth. And any time anybody asks us to change or do something different, our amygdala goes eh! and says, no, no, you're going to die. No, don't do it. No. <laughs> So in, in, like conquering the, the fear, the it feeling that you... In fact, let's all embed this into our systems. You're doing out this, you're like in TV land. I hope you're doing this. So on the count of three, one joy buddy, then the other, you're going it, it. Ready? One, two, three, go. It, it. Beautiful. Now, the next time you happen to notice inside that you're going it, I want you to stop and breathe because that helps you get through it. But, but I will give you the scientific formula for change before we go through some of the little fears. Now, I want you to keep breathing as I talk to you about this, okay? Because my accent makes it sound funny. So, for us, and this is true, this is a scientific formula. For us to change, we need to fark. Now, keep breathing, keep breathing. It's spelled F-A-R-C, okay? Now, your next mission, should you choose to accept it, is to go forth and fark, OK? <laughs> and on the count of three, I want you to turn to your new joy buddy, best joy buddy in the world, and I want you to say, I am a farker. I am a farker. OK? Ready? One, two, three, go. I am a farker. I am a farker. Yes, you are. And let's look at what farking is. And, um, and I want to make sure that you got something practical as you walked away from today. And you know, when you get back and someone at the office says, oh, how was it? What did you learn? You can answer, well, not only did I learn I am a joy facilitator, but I can fuck. <laughs> now let's look at what farking is. So, um, what do you think the F stands for? Focus, yeah. Oh, by the way, I should have said this earlier. Look, I didn't I didn't wake up this morning and think, oh, what can I do to offend these people today? <laughs> I did not do this. I'm really trying to do the best I can. So if I do anything that like really shocks anybody or so, could you just say, forgive her, she's an Aussie. Okay, so forgive her, she's an Aussie. Now, F stands for focus. You cannot change your behavior if you're unconscious of what it is that you're doing. You have to focus on the behavior that you want to change because most of us are living lives of habits and patterns ruled unconsciously by fear. And so we've got to focus on the behavior. Then we have to become, oh, and this is all on my website, um, amandagore.com. It's probably on Twitter. It's probably all over the place. But anyway, I know it's on my website. Um, uh, then we have to become aware of the triggers that are driving the behavior. And usually the triggers are fears. Most of our behaviors are driven by fear. And that's why it's critical we become conscious of the fears that are driving what we're doing. And then we have to, um, E-A-T, we have to repeat the new behaviors. In fact, Alvin Toffler once said that um, intelligence in the future will not be measured by the ability to read and write. It'll be measured by the ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Well, I, I just want to modify that a bit. I reckon life is about farking, unfarking, and refarking. <laughs> Seriously? Because every time you fark, you set up a new scratch in the brain. And each time you fark at that one thing, the scratch gets deeper and deeper until it becomes automatic. And then it gets stored in the basal ganglia in the brain. This is true. And, but, but so we got all these behaviors that we farked on so often that they're embedded in us. So we got to unfark and then refark. See, it makes sense? Okay, so if, you, you know, if you're stuck on something, just try this little gesture, you know, and that'll help you remember unfark, refark. So the last part, see, Mm -mm. It's really hard to do this without spelling that. B-R-A-T-E, what is it? C, 
celebrate, yeah, is to celebrate. The brain loves celebration. And, and, um, and we'll come back to this in a minute too. But whenever you achieve the smallest thing, it's really important to celebrate. And whether you achieve it or someone else achieves it, make sure you celebrate with them because honestly, I know I make fun of it, but honestly, farking is really important. So remember, focus, aware, repetition, celebration. And then let's look at three of the common fears that most people have. Uh, what's the first one? Mm -mm. I L I A T I O N. What is it? It's humiliation. Yeah, and lucky for us, it starts with F. I call it faux what. Now, this is fear of what others think. See, now think about it. Do toddlers get humiliated? No. Toddlers come out, they run around and they go with their little dresses and they stick their fingers up their noses and they look at you and go, You look funny. They never get humiliated. But we teach them humiliation. And uh, look, I hate to burst your bubble, but you know, no one else is ever thinking about you. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Honestly, ever. Because they are so obsessed with what you are thinking about them, they don't have time to think about you. <laughs> so whenever I ask you to do something, and your little amygdala is going, eh, and, and you're thinking, I don't want to look stupid. I can't, I'm the leader. I can't look ridiculous. Are you kidding? They don't care. They're too busy thinking about themselves. So just throw yourselves into this. Allow the joy that's inside you to emerge and pour all over the person next to you because you're a joy facilitator. So we're scrapping humiliation, complete waste of time. Second big fear is mm -mm, A-R-A-T-I-O-N. What is it? Separation, yeah, and, and we've got to get connected. Oh, and this one ties in with what Terry was saying. This is family. We've got to get connected, and there are three areas of connection, head, heart, heart to heart, heart to the heavens. And, and you know, I believe in God, and I, I wouldn't like to impose my values on you. I, d I don't know what you believe in, but if it is just yourself, you may want to consider something a little bit bigger. <laughs> So let's focus today on head to heart and heart to heart. And again, if you're communicating with people and when you, as Guy was talking about presenting to people, you can't just use words. Words, I mean, they used visuals and Terry was incredibly funny and deep. And, and if you just use words, people are like this. They're in a coma in seconds. So giving people symbols helps them remember things. So I'm going to give you symbols for the rest of the stuff we're doing today. So you're gonna love this one, connecting head to heart. See, most of us are severed at the neck especially little boys. Because we raise little boys up to be sensitive people. They go to school, what happens to a little boy that's sensitive? He gets beaten to a pulp. Very quickly, he learns to sever himself. Then he hasn't had a feeling for years because he's been living in its head. It hurts too much to have feelings. Women now who work full time, and that would be you, are having heart attacks at the same rate as men. And we know that it's partly because women are now severing themselves at the neck, because we've got too much to do, we're too busy and we're overwhelmed. So now we've got all these people walking around in their heads going, oh, what's enough that we want more? We have to have a bigger car, a bigger house, a bigger TV, more shoes, a lot more shoes. And down here, your heart's going, help, help. We have to have a feeling down here. And the brain goes, shut up, we haven't got enough shoes yet. Oh, right. <laughs> And a few more years go by and it's hair, hair. And then what happens? Nothing. Zip dead, you're gone. See, think about it. What's the most important organ in the body? Oh, stop, sorry. <laughs> Only two choices. <laughs> brain or heart, which one? <laughs> it's the heart. And if you were thinking brain, wrong. See, can you be brain dead and still alive? Yes, thousands and thousands of people walk around like that every day. <laughs> but once your heart stops, what happens? Nothing. Zip, dead. They see, we have got to get reconnected to our hearts. And so this is the symbol of how you do it. You're going to love this one. Everybody, hold up one hand with your fingers spread out like this. Remember, you're a spirit igniter. Spirit igniters go <laughs> with a crow's feet. Spirit foofers go. So let's try that once again, especially out there in TV land, and let's all be spirit igniters as we go. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Sir, you up the back. Oh, you're joining in. Good. Keep your hands up there. Now, what's between... Hey, <laughs> we sprung. What's between your fingers? Space. Very good. What's meant to go in that space? Diamonds, yes. <laughs> Huge diamonds are meant to go in that space. And once we've jammed as many diamonds as we can into that space, what's really meant to go in there? Another hand. It's corny, but just do it, okay? Go like this. 
Now keep doing this until I say let go, okay? I have to let go to show you how to use it, but you keep doing this. So this is how, because people look at me and they go, oh yeah, she was stupid. But it works. I've got the fancy degrees and the fancy words. It's just that if I said that to you, you would all be in a coma. So when I make it funny and memorable, people think she was stupid. <laughs> but it works. So watch. You're sitting in your desk. Keep your hands together. I have to let mine go. Okay, keep them together. So you're sitting in your desk. Your least favourite person is walking towards you. Now let's be honest. Are you in your head using judgement or in your heart using wisdom and discernment, looking at them going, great. Here's another opportunity to practice forgiveness and <laughs> compassion. <laughs> now, don't clap, it means you let go. Uh, you're in your head going, what, what now, what, you moron? <laughs> now, we think that they don't know. Oh, yes, they know. They don't know exactly what you're saying, but they know basically that you hate them. And so what you've got to do is realise when you're in your head, you're disconnected from them and their heart anyway, and what's happening to your blood pressure? Through the roof. And so you've got to do something to get out of your head. I said, watch, this is how you do it, right? So you're sitting there, you see them coming towards you, you think, voila. You see the blood vessels in your neck starting to go blam, blam. You think, I must get out of my head into my heart. And so quickly you go, I'll do this. And if that doesn't work, you go like this. <laughs> now, if you're sitting with a colleague here today and they look at you from now on and go, you know exactly what's happening, don't you? But seriously, this is the trigger to get out of your head into your heart. Now, let's connect heart to heart because I want you to stay connected to yourselves, just disconnect your hands. Now, this is the symbol of connecting heart to heart. You're going to love this one. Everybody, hold hands. Hold hands with your joy buddy on either side. We'll be hugging later. Now, you two fellas, make sure you are. People who are sitting on your own, I want you to reach out. Beautiful. Sir, you're not holding her hand. No, no, some of you have to hold hands. Sir, you in the white shirt with the woman next to you. Go. The lady with the pearls. Come on, we haven't got time. Just hold hands. Hold his leg then. Right. Now, keep holding hands. Keep holding hands. Keep holding Because you should see some of your faces. It's like, I hope they've washed their hands. Stop it! Stop it! It doesn't matter whether they wash their hands, it's good for your germ control and immune system. Now, what you don't know is that this person on either side of you is actually helping you live longer. Mm -hmm. Seriously, don't look at them and go, oh, I don't think so. Yes, they are. There's a guy called Dean Ornish, who's the first cardiologist in the history of the planet to have proven he can reverse heart disease without surgery. Seriously? And he's proven when you're um, uh, disconnected from others and disconnected from yourself, you die earlier of all causes. Seriously, seriously. So on the count of three, if you're holding hands with somebody, I want you to look at your new joy buddy and say, thank you for helping me live longer. Thank you. Well, ready? One, two, three, go. Thank you for helping me live longer. Thank you for helping me live longer. Beautiful. Now you can let go, but don't go like this, okay? But don't